In lesson three, we'll be covering subtraction and addition and subtraction patterns. In part A on subtraction, let's just go ahead and review subtraction by doing some practice problems. Now, in this one, we want to subtract $4.39 from $6.25. Now, when we do addition, the numbers we add together, those are called add-ins, and the result is a sum. The result of subtraction is a difference. The 439, we call that the subtrahend, and the 625, we call that the minuend. They have kind of weird names for them. But there aren't many other things in life that you will call a subtrahend. And so that's why sometimes weird words like that are helpful because that helps us distinguish what we're talking about. When we hear the word subtrahend or minuend, we won't think of like some electrical part on our computer or a type of bird or something like that. We'll know that we're talking about parts in a subtraction problem. The best way to write subtraction problems and to work them is to write the numbers vertically one on top of another with the decimal points lined up. So we'll put the menu in first, 6.25, the subtrahend second, 4.39, put a bar and a subtraction symbol to remind us that we're doing subtraction. And then we go ahead and start our subtraction. We want to subtract 9 from 5. That's our right column there. We cannot subtract 9 from 5. So we need to borrow 1 from that tenths place. What we do is we take this 2, cross it out, and make it a 1 because we borrowed 1 and we put that over here in the tenths or the hundredths place basically is where that 5 is. We call that a 15 now. Every place value to the left of 1 is basically a multiple of 10 greater. So that 1 above the 5 is like a 10. 10 plus 5 is 15 minus 9. That would be 6. Then we have a 1 minus 3. We can't do that. We can't subtract 3 from 1. So again, we need to borrow. And so we'll borrow from the 6. And we make that a 5. Bring that 1 that we borrowed or that 10 that we borrowed and bring it over to that next column. Now we have an 11 minus 3 which is 8. Put our decimal point. A 5 minus 4 is 1. One dollar eighty-six cents. One dollar and eighty-six cents. That's our answer. Once you try to do another one, three dollars minus thirteen cents. Think about that. You've got cents so you need to change that to like a dollar format with decimal points. Pause the CD and see if you can figure it out. So your menu end would be three dollars. You write that first. The subtrahend would be thirteen cents, and we put zero point one three. So it's zero dollars and thirteen cents is a way to say that. Subtract these now. We have three dollars minus thirteen cents. We need to take the 3, subtract the 3 from 0. We can't do that. So we need to borrow from the next column. But that's a 0 as well. So we can't borrow from that. We can borrow from the 3 though. So we make that a 2. Put a 1 here. So basically we have a 10 now. Borrow 1 from that. That would make this a 9. And a 10 in that hundredths column. So now we can do 10 minus 3 is 7. 9 minus 1 is 8. 2 minus 0 is 2. $2.87. Maybe you could do a problem like that in your head. That's great if you could do that problem in your head. But you need to show how you did it in your head. And that's like what I just wrote down. You need to be able to show your work and prove that you can do it in your head and prove how you solved it in your head. Again, I think that's great if you could do a problem like that in your head. That's important, especially with money. Like if you're at the store and you want to make sure you're getting the right change when you buy something. That's important to be able to do some subtraction of money values in your head. Here in math, though, you need to prove that you can do it in your head by showing your work on paper. Part B of this lesson is on addition and subtraction patterns. For example, let's say we had 6 plus 8. That equals 14. Now, we could undo that addition 
by saying 14 minus 8. That is equal to 6. And we get back to that original 6 that we had in the addition problem at the beginning of it. 6 plus 8 equals 14. 14 minus 8 equals 6. We say that addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They undo each other. So if we had a problem like this, n minus 8 equals 6, and we wanted to know what that missing number is, we could just think, well, addition undoes subtraction. And we could say n equals 8 plus 6, which is 14. 14 minus 8 equals 6. So n equals 14. Or what if we had a problem like this? 14 minus n equals 6. Well, we wouldn't just say 14 plus 6 is 20. 14 minus 20 equals 6. We know that's not right. On a problem like that, if we had a missing number in there, we'd just do another subtraction problem. 14 minus 6 is equal to 8. And so n equals 8. You can always check your work on these. You can just say, well, is that right? 14 minus 8, does that equal 6? Yes, it does. So that would be the answer. Just keep in mind that addition and subtraction are inverse operations. One undoes the other. And you'll be using that idea to help you solve some problems where you have a missing number, like an N in an addition or subtraction problem. Look at practice problem C. 320 plus C equals 537. When we have a missing add-in like that, what we do to figure out what it is, is we subtract the sum from that other add-in that we have. So we perform an inverse operation there, subtraction, and I'll just write it down here, minus 320. I'll just write it off of that 537. Let's do the subtraction. 7 minus 0 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. That's what C equals. That's the missing number there would be 217. We can always check our work. 320, 217, 0 plus 7 is 7, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. That gets us back to the other 537. So those numbers that I have highlighted there. We, our first problem we were had for our sum was 537. We showed that C equals 217 and checked our work by adding it to 320 and we got again 537. So that shows that we did the problem correctly and C does equal 217. Look at practice problem D, a subtraction problem. And we have a missing number D minus 427 equals 211. Well we know in subtraction we always have a bigger number minus a smaller number equals the difference. So D has to be bigger than 427 and that should just make us think we're going to do an addition problem here. Don't worry so much about menu end and subtrahend. Just remember that you're always doing a bigger minus a smaller. If you can remember that then that will help you think, oh to find that missing number I need to add the two numbers that they've given me together. In these problems like this where there's a missing number there's three parts you combine the two known parts either by addition or subtraction to find that missing part. Here we'll do addition to find what D is because we know that it has to be bigger than 427 so the only thing we could do then is addition and let's add those two together now 1 and 7 is 8 2 and 1 is 3 4 and 2 is 6 638 that's what D would equal we can always check our work. That's a good idea when we're first learning a concept to make sure we're doing it right. Let's say 638 minus 427. And 8 minus 7 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. 6 minus 4 is 2. 211. We got the same answer as our difference in our original problem. So that tells us that we did the problem correctly and that D does indeed equal 638. Look at practice problem E. 618 minus E equals 349. Now just think about that. We know in subtraction we take a bigger number minus a smaller number to get a result. And there's 
three parts here. We take the two numerical parts and either add or subtract them to get that missing part. So what do you think you would do here? Would you add 618 and 349 to figure out what E was or would you subtract them? Well you would subtract them because you would have to have a smaller number there for E than you have for 618. That's just how you do subtraction, right? It's the bigger number minus the smaller. So subtract 618 and 349. On addition problems, you can just write the number that you're going to add to the sum or difference. You can just write that right below that sum or difference. But here we have a subtraction problem, so we need to just rewrite that whole problem and we'll start with 8 minus 9 we can't do that so we need to borrow from the tens place make that a 0 18 minus 9 would be 9 then we have a 0 minus 4 we need to borrow from the 6 so we borrow 5 and we'll take a 1 and bring it over 10 minus 4 is 6 5 minus 3 is 2 269 is what E would equal When we're learning a new concept, we should always check our work. So we will do 618 minus 269. 8 minus 9 can't do that, so we need to borrow 1. And we'll have 18 minus 9 is 9. Then that make that a 0. 0 minus 6, we can't do that, so we need to borrow. This will be a 5. Make that a 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 5 minus 2 is 3. That gets us back to our original difference of 349. And that tells us that 269 is the correct numerical value for E. Let's do one more. This one's written out horizontally. F minus 811 equals 115. Well, just think about it. That number on the left, the F, it's still, that has to be the bigger number. It has to be bigger than 811 in a subtraction problem. That tells us that we need to add the 811 and the 115 together to figure out what F is. So let's do that. 811 and 115. Put a plus sign there to remember we're doing addition. 5 plus 1 is 6. 1 plus 1 is 2. 8 plus 1 is 9. 926. That's what we're saying F is equal to. Now again, since we're learning, let's check our work to make sure that we did that right. And we take 926, which is what we're saying F is, subtract 811 from it. 6 minus 1 is 5. 2 minus 1 is 1. 9 minus 8 is 1. And that's our original difference, 115. So that means that 926 is the correct answer for F. So when you're doing this addition and subtraction and figuring out these patterns here, especially on subtraction problems, you have to sometimes you'll be doing subtraction to find the missing number, sometimes you'll be doing addition. It depends on where that missing number is in the problem. If it's the second number, then it has to be smaller. So you're going to be doing subtraction. If it's the first number, then it has to be bigger, so you're adding that number or adding the two numbers that you know, you're adding those together. The result of the subtraction problem plus the other number, the second number. Also known as the subtrahend. Addition problems, it doesn't really matter if it's the first or the second number that's missing. You're always doing subtraction to figure out that missing number. Okay, well that's all for lesson three.